Okay, welcome. We're live. Confirmation Lesson 18, the introduction to the Creed. So we're looking at the Creed on page 73 of our workbooks. It's kind of a purple, purple trimmed page. And there's the Creed. We said it today during church, so we're not going to read it again, but it's Notice it's in three sections, and they call each section an article. Like if you've looked at the Constitution, it's got an article in the Constitution. That's kind of a section. And so it's got three sections. The first one deals with God the Father. He's the creator, right? The second one, who does the second article deal with? As you look there, what do you Jesus. think? Yeah, it's obviously about Jesus. I have this whole thing. It is a summary. That's a great way to say that. I have this whole thing memorized. Good, yeah. Well, hopefully we all do. Wait, and then is the, it page 73? 73, yep. In order. And then the third article. Who does the third article deal with? The Holy Spirit. Right. And, and no, notice that I said, who does it deal with? Because now some people do it by accident. I'm not talking about the, that. But in the old, old, old church times, like almost 2,000 years ago, there were some people who said, no, no, no. The Holy Spirit is not God. The Holy Spirit is just the power of God. And yet the Bible uh, teaches very differently. And we'll, and we'll look at all this stuff later. But So you've got, here's the mystery, right? Three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God. How can that be? I don't know. They're all the same. They're not the same, though. Oh, wait, no. Jesus, for example, today, what happened in our gospel reading? Jesus is on the mountain, and what happens? He, like, is glowing. He's glowing. Peter, James, and John there, they freak out. Moses and Elijah are talking with Jesus. And then when the cloud comes over, what happens then? They like, fall on their faces. Before that, why do they fall on their faces? What do they hear? God's voice. A voice spoke. Yeah. This is my son. son. So they're not the same. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. And the Spirit is not the Father. Yet they're all one God. How do you explain that? You don't. I mean, people have tried all kinds of things. Like they'll say, okay... Like the best one I've ever seen is probably three matchsticks, and you light them, and they're all one flame, but they're three different matchsticks. Okay. Flame. Or sometimes people will say it's like, well, it's like an apple has a skin, and then the, the flesh of the apple, and then yeah, the core. Well, but like that. but it, that's not a very good analogy. Yeah. Isn't it like the green thing on the communion table? Like yes. The There's many symbols. Like so, so three rings that are interlocked, sometimes a triangle, three-sided triangle. There's all kinds of symbols we have. And the Trinity is just something beyond what we can what we can do. Okay, got to stretch a little bit. As a class, look at each statement below. If you believe it, stand up. If you don't believe it, sit down. So I'm going to have you get, get ready to stand up, right? Number one, eating chocolate makes you live longer. Oh, I hope that's true. I'm going to stand up for that. I hope it's true. I want it to be true. All right? The sun is made of a billion fireflies. <laughs> People are good. They just make mistakes sometimes. Stand up if you believe it. Stay seated if you don't. Okay? I am a sinner. Ah, oh, good job, you guys. You guys are rocking it. Yes, I, I would stand. Okay, I'm standing up. Okay. Uh, God made the heavens and the earth. Uh, Jesus is the savior of the world. Yep. The tooth fairy brings money in exchange for teeth. That, we were reading these. That's why we Oh, okay. The there you go. The Holy Spirit makes me a new person. Okay, we got one. Anybody else? I, I don't uh, know. When, we come for, when Jesus comes, we will be. Oh. Well, we already are. And what's right. So actually, the Holy Spirit makes us new on the inside. And then that'll when Jesus comes, it'll be visible. Some of these are hard. That's good. When Jesus comes, again, we will all rise from the dead. If we're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> awesome answer, Caroline. You are so right. And the last one, there is no life after death. Good. You guys did very well. I'm really proud of you. We're really good, good humans. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jesus <laughs> says there's no one good but God alone. Uh, but yeah, you did really well on this. So I'm really proud of you. That's great. Look, there's a little note at the bottom. What does okay. it say? Why don't you I read it, Emma? I understand how the creed shows me who God is and what he's done for me. Oh, there's one on the side. I what does that one say, Emma, uh, Caroline? God has created, redeemed, and called me to be, and called me to be his own. Yep. I think that's the goal of the lesson. I hurt my hand yesterday. I don't know how. Yeah, I've done that before. Just get get some ice on it. Ice is like your number one thing. That's it's what the so nurses cold. say. Yeah, yeah. It, it works really well. Like my friend, like we had to, one of my friends popped her shoulder out. <sighs> so um. One of my friends popped it back in, and so she went to the nurse, like, oh, I popped my shoulder out. Ice. <laughs> ice crackers. Yeah, the nurse always you need says ice, ice and crackers. Crackers? What are the crackers for? Just to distract you while you have the ice on? Probably. <laughs> I want you to grind the crackers up, put them on your shoulder. <laughs> 
No, Thank ice you. really is good. But normally, they, the doctor will tell you don't pop your shoulder back in yourself or have a friend do it because you can you got all this like a finger or a shoulder. You got all these ligaments around there. If you do it wrong, you can tear them, and that's way worse than just stretching them. So, okay, page seventy four. We're gonna dig a little deeper. Does it matter what I believe? Let's see. Uh, Tim, would you read that first question? Some people, some people say that it doesn't really matter what you believe about anything. It's in, it's all equally valid. What do you? Think? Yeah. So what do you guys think? I think it does matter what you believe. Well, and I, and you're right. But why? Why does it matter what I believe? Let's say, think of a situation. Can you think of a situation where it would matter what you believe? Identity. Okay, yeah. So you can you can copy what I did this morning. That's cheating. It's not cheating. Uh, um, no, it's not cheating. But I want to make you think a little bit. So, um, well, let's here. I'll just run with that. So I, I'm introducing you to the world of adult thinking about the Bible and stuff, and not little kids anymore. So there are young people, 17, 16, 20, who are going for gender reassignment surgery. If the, they'll try to make you look more like a boy or more like a girl, depending on, of course, which direction you're coming from. So, does it matter what you believe? Yeah. Yeah, it, it sure does, doesn't it? Can, it? it can, like, change your whole entire personality. Yeah, that's right, and you have to take drugs and all this stuff. And so, it matters what you believe because you could mutilate your body for the rest of your life. That's a big deal. Um, maybe something not quite so dramatic. How about... Uh, Okay, how about as you guys are 10 years from now, so you're in your early 20s, and you love somebody, and then your friends say, oh, why don't you guys just move in together? Why don't you just live together? Well, my parents said I should wait till I get married to have sex and to live with somebody. Does it matter what you believe? Yeah. Sure does. Did you know statistically you have a better chance of being happy and staying married if you wait to live with somebody until you're married? And it's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Because you think, well, if I if I buy a car, I test drive it, right? So if we live together maybe a year or two, then we'll see if we want to make it permanent. But what that actually does is it, it, it increases the odds of you not staying together. It's very interesting stuff. All right, so let's see what the Bible has to say. Mia, would you read John 14, 6? And Whit, would you read John, what does it say? John 3, 16. John 3, 16. What if I haven't memorized? Then just wait, because Mia's going to read first. So John 14 that Mia's looking up um, is probably the day, the Thursday, when Jesus has the Last Supper with his disciples, and um, he's arrested probably that night. I'm pretty sure that's when John 14 happens. At the beginning of the chapter, he says, hey, I'm going away, and they're all sad, and they don't really understand. And so he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And so it's in this section then that we hear John 14, verse 6. So Mia, you got that? Chapter 14, verse 6. Just verse 6. Yeah, so let me introduce a little bit, a little bit more. So Jesus says, hey, uh, you, know the, you know the way to where the place where I'm going. And Thomas is like, oh, we don't even know where you're going. Because they're, they're totally confused. I would be confused too. Okay. So he says, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And then re read the verse, Mia. Uh, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what does the Bible say about what truth is? What is truth according to the Bible? Jesus. That's right. Truth is a person. Life is a person. If you think about it, God made all things. He, God gave the animals life and he gave the birds life and all that. He just, he invented life. Think about that. All right. Thank you. You're distracting people now. Please stop. All right. So he invented life. So he is life. And uh, so, and he is also truth. All right. John 3, 16. Wait, give it to For us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So does it matter if you know the truth about that? Yeah. Sure does. Yeah. If you know, if you know that Jesus is the one who gives you eternal life, then you'll have eternal life. If you don't know him, you won't. All right. Uh, let's see the next little paragraph. Caroline, would you read where it says there is a God? There is no God. There is a God. There is no God. 
These two sentences cannot both be true. How might people live life if they don't believe there is any God? If they believe... Oh, these are good questions today. So if people don't believe there's any God, how do you think that might influence the way they live? Wit? So there's no God. There's no power. There's no life after death. We have no meaning. We can do whatever we want. It doesn't yep. matter. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's a really good answer. How, what do you think people might, if they don't believe there's a God, how, how do they think about right and wrong? They think they're right. So they think they're right? What else? Mia? Um, maybe there isn't a right and wrong. So what do they get to do? Anything. Whatever they want. they want. That's right. Their heart. Yeah. yeah, it's in my heart. My heart. I just love that. My heart, my heart is ignoring you. My heart tells me your heart is a liar. <laughs> yeah, that's a great my line, heart, isn't it? My heart says I should drive on the left side of the road. Yeah, have a nice life because it won't last very long. <laughs> yep, unless you're in England. So uh, those are good questions. Now, now, if you do believe there is a God, how, how might that affect the way you live? If you believe that there is a God, then you believe that there is life. Well, probably there is life after death. You most likely have a set of rules mm -hmm. or you would want to follow to please that God. That's right. Yeah, so that's a great answer to a generic question, Whit, because uh, if we're Christians, we know there's life eternal. And for Christians, we know that um, we can't earn our way to please him into eternal life. So, yep. Okay. Uh so it matters what you believe. So let's ask what Christians believe. So we got to get our catechisms out now. And we're going to look on... 104 and 107. Yes. Do well, you have a page number for us, Caroline? No, I just turned it to Okay. Right. Looks like page 129. At least 104. 107 is going to be like 131 or something. 107 is on... Oh, yeah. So 129 and 130. And actually, we're going to be in these pages, so don't close your catechism because we'll just we'll keep going back to it. And that way you'll have it open. All right. Read questions 104 and 107. What is a creed? Caroline, would you read 104? You haven't read yet, have you? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, Emma, would you read 104? Sorry. The creed summarizes all of God's work in creation and in human history <clears throat> as taught in the Bible. Whew. That's a lot. It's a gigantic uh, summary. And then, Tim, would you read 107? Next page. Why does the creed begin with the words, I believe? The English word creed comes from the Latin word... Credo. Credo. I believe. A creed is a statement of faith, a statement of what I believe. To say I believe is to say what God has done for me. I am convinced that God has made me, redeemed me, and sanctified. sanctified me. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctified means to kind of set apart and equip you to serve God. Okay, so what is a creed? How would you say it? Now, you got to write this in your workbooks. Um, looking at questions 104 and 107, what is a creed? Um. Sad. All right, so based on what uh, Emma and Tim just read, what is a creed? So we'll let people write. Write something down first. You gotta, you gotta write it out, and then we'll talk. Number 104 kind of deals with the content, and number 107 deals with what that means. So in other words, you don't need a big, long answer to this. Would it be only the Christian creed? Or would it yeah, be that's what we're talking about now. Oh, yeah, well, only the Christian creed. Yep. 
That's a good point. There are lots of religions out there and lots of statements of belief out there, and so we're just right. talking about ours. Are you talking about creeds in general, or? Just the Christian creeds, and we'll look specifically at the Apostles' Creed. Okay. Okay, so what did you guys come up with? What's a creed? Tim, what did you come up with? I said it's the summary of what God did. Okay, that's and very... It's also a statement of faith. Very, that's a really complete answer. Nice. Mia, did you get anything besides that? Uh, no. He's pretty thorough. Whit, how about you? Anything different? Statement of faith and what we believe. Yeah, same thing. Okay, did anybody get anything besides what Tim said? Because he had a really good answer. <laughs> a summary of God's work in creation mm -hmm. confessing our faith. Yeah, that's another way to say it. Yeah. So a creed is... What we believe about what God has done. And the creed summarizes it for us. So good job, you guys. So if you're going to say you are a Christian, you should know what Christians believe. Well, I guess so. What creeds does the Christian church use? Uh, let's look at question 108. Let's see. Who's our next reader? Is it Mia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Mia, you get to read and see if you can pronounce the name of the last creed. It's not the easiest. All right? So question 108 in your catechism, <coughs> page 130. So we're going to look at, and there's three of them, I'll give you a hint, and, and let's see, uh, let's just, yeah, read it, go ahead and read it, 108. Are the Christian church has long used the three creeds, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed? Awesome, good job, that's perfect, Athanasian. Uh, we use the Apostles' Creed in the Catechism, each of the creeds clarify specific areas of doctrinal controversy and confusion. Good job. That's a hard one to read. Let me see. I'm going to see if they if they have printed these. I don't see them. So, the Apostles' Creed, you guys know that you have it memorized. It's the shortest one. The Nicene Creed, we use that almost every other week. It's longer in the middle. So, if it's longer in the middle, which person of the Trinity would it have more detail about? The Father, the Son, or the Spirit? The Father. The Son. The Son, that's right. And that's because they, they wrote the Apostles' Creed first. And I think I told you when you were getting ready to act like today, I think it was you, um, that, that we have a full copy of the Creed from 190 A.D., so it's very early. And we know it was in use before that. And parents had their children memorize it. There's the memory thing, Emma. Um, because during times of Roman persecution, sometimes the Romans would kill the parents and sell the children into slavery. And so the, the parents wanted their kids to remember. And so the Apostles' Creed is nice and short. Even really like a two-year-old can memorize it. The Nicene Creed has that medical, middle, middle, medical. The middle section get longer because there's more about Jesus. The Athanasian Creed... We haven't used it for a couple of years. We'll use it um, in June. And, and Athanasius, named after him, he was a big defender of the Trinity. And there were lots of people who didn't believe that God was tri triune, three persons, one God. And so he wrote this super detailed, long, long creed. It's humongous. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it here in a few months in worship. But it, but it basically says, there's only one God. And it says things like, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. Uh, the Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, and the Spirit is eternal. But there are not three eternals, but one eternal. And then it says, you know, like the... And, and so it just gives unbelief. I mean, you read it and go, oh, I'm getting a headache. But he had to do that because there were people who would say things like, well, the Son is not God, but he's really close. Or they say, no, the Holy Spirit is just the power of God, but not God himself. And so they had to be super specific. So that's the Athanasian Creed. So is it longer or shorter oh, than longer. the genealogy? Would it be like... Oh, it depends which genealogy. Would it be like a whole page? It would be oh, like a whole page, yeah. So so you look at the the Apostles' Creed. What was that on page 73? Yeah. So the Athanasian Creed would fill up this whole first page. And the, and the Apostles' Creed is just up there. It's humongous. Okay. I can't That's why we don't use it on Sunday mornings. Okay. Uh, question at the bottom. Question 106. Where does the church get the creeds? In other words, what is the authority for the creeds? Wit, you're up. Number 106, please. <clears throat> then, then why do we need the Bible or a summary of the Bible, such as a creed? 
Although creation gives witnesses to its creator, it does not reveal his identity and name. Mm -hmm. In some ways, creation gives us the first chapter of the story. The Bible and its summary in the creed gives, gives us the rest of the story. The Bible teaches us to know God more fully and for our salvation. So can you tell there's a God by looking at creation? Well, what if you look at uh, a monarch monsters. butterfly? Remember we talked about them and how they migrate? Does that point to God? It does. It does. Totally does. Two sets of DNA. The first generation lives nine months. And they have two or three generations that live three months. Then the next generation lives nine months. And by the way, flies back to Mexico with no butterflies that have ever been there. How do they do that? Instinct. Yeah. But who, who programmed that tiny little brain that's the intersection of like 20 nerves? Like a little drone. Yeah, it's amazing. So there's lots of things in creation. I wonder how long <laughs> he's like, ooh, a brain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the stuff that God made is incredible. So you can tell there's somebody out there, an, a, a, a being of incredible intelligence, Wait, you but you don't know who he is. You can't just be born in a world that is just there. What do you mean? Like, like the it's world weird wasn't how, just there. Like, everything that, like, since you were born, you have seen is just there. <laughs> so you mean the stuff around you that you've seen since you yeah. were born? Yeah. I mean, that tells you somebody put it there. Stuff just doesn't come out of nowhere. In fact, that's a scientific law that evolution breaks. Mm -hmm. Everything came from nothing. And that's impossible. Also, another thing is if everything is just random like evolutionists say, then why do some animals need others to coexist? That's they right. have to evolve at the very same time. Yeah, bees, honeybees, and, and flowers. Some flowers cannot pollinate without bees or, or insects like bees. And bees have to have the, the nectar to eat. Yeah, and I even really more, like there was, wasn't it like a type of shark or something needs these little fish to clean it? And then Remoras, the fish yeah. fish need the shark to Yeah, and the them. sharks don't eat them. In fact, I saw, yeah, I saw one of these things where they're actually cleaning the teeth of a shark. And these little fish go swim around in the mouth and it doesn't eat them. Because like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, right, uh, uh. And they're in there like cleaning. Like a little toothbrush. Yeah, a little and fishy toothbrush. If it wasn't for the sharks, the fish, fish can't eat. And if it wasn't for the fish, then the sharks wouldn't be able to do anything. Cause yeah, it's pretty incredible. Stuff. Yep. So they have to evolve at the exact same time. Yep. Okay, uh, question 106. We read that already. So um, the question is, where does the church get the creeds? In other words, what is the authority for the creeds? So are we writing this? Well, just no, you know, well, yes, but, but first let's say it. Where does the creed get its content and authority? The creed gets its content and authority from the Bible. Yeah. His creation is like the first chapter of the story. In the yeah. Bible, all you have to say is from the Bible. From the Bible, that's right, from the Bible. So I'm going to read your Bible verse. I think you'll be kind of surprised. Well, not surprised, but it's interesting. Now tell me what this sounds like when you hear it. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Where have you heard that before? The creed. In the creed, that's right. But it actually is right out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And so what the creeds did is that they, they took Bible passages and they said, we want to summarize this. But they actually used direct quotes from the Bible for that. Okay, page 75, knowing God, pretend you are all alone, you live all alone on an island, you have never spoken to anyone all your life, what might you know about God? That he created the world. Yep, so, and how would you know that? Because it can't just be placed there, there has to be somebody. Who okay, so that he created it, so go ahead and write that down, say so that God created the world. And by looking at the creation, what would you be able to learn about God? Let's say you saw some beautiful fish in the shallows in the in this, I'm going to assume it's a tropical island. Rainbow fish. Yeah, like a rainbow fish. Okay. I don't know how many times I read that book. Give away your scales. It's a beautiful story. Okay. Um, so uh, what would you, you look in the shallows? In, I, I went to Hawaii once when I was in high school. Our, our basketball team went. Hawaii. Hawaii, and it was beautiful. 
And, and I, I took a mask and some fins. I was diving around, and there's all these beautiful fish. Uh, I felt like I was in a movie. I mean, these purple and yellow fish. So what would that teach you about God? He likes to be colorful. Yeah, he's artistic, right? The best artist. I mean, evolutionists have no answer for beauty. You know, you can listen to a beautiful, like a symphony, and as you get older, especially you appreciate that more, and you have tears in your eyes, or you see a beautiful sunrise or sunset or a painting, and you go, wow, that really impacts me. Evolutionists say, well, that's, you know, just random just feelings random that sun. just that come from different molecules in your brain because you ate this food or whatever. They're, they have no answer for beauty. So let's say you're watching. Do you guys know about seahorses? Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 pretend they are weird. Let's pretend you um, you're marooned on this island, but it's like the movie Castaway, and there's like a suitcase, and and had a snorkel and mask and fins, and so you dive down, and you're diving down, and you see this beautiful seahorse, um, and it's it's waving in the branches of the seaweed, and you can hardly tell the difference between it, and then you see that, that the seahorse carries the the male carries the babies. And then the babies come out of the male stomach. Yeah, it's really weird. That's why they're. What would you learn? What would you learn about God from that? Or that he's a weird. He, he's a. He's, he's a weird, weird. dude. <laughs> he's weird. Who, okay. He's Everything. Uh, babies are in females. But seahorses. They're in males. Yeah. I don't want to see me. Mm -hmm. Or how? Yeah. Or how about if you saw a platypus? Do you guys know what a platypus is? Oh, you yeah. carry the platypus and like that show. Exactly. Yeah. I don't that was a funny cartoon. That was my favorite cartoon that I saw that my kids ever watched. What was that called? Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb. Thank you. <laughs> Doofenshmirtz Incorporated. That was the best. <laughs> Do Doofenshmirtz <laughs> Evil Incorporated. All right. So. <laughs> So if you see this kind of stuff in its complexity, what does that teach you about God? He's unique. Okay, but so let's say let's say you know there's this TV show now called Lego Builder or something like that. Lego Man. Le Lego Masters. I think it's that's what. Oh yeah. Called. Oh yeah. yeah. And the the premise of the show is great. They have some really weird people, on it, unfortunately, but. And then they blow up. Yes, they do. So if you saw this incredible Lego. Construction. What would you say about the person who designed it? They're Someone pretty talented. talented. Pretty talented. Pretty smart. So now you're you're in this on this island, and there's this nice warm lagoon to swim around, and you see these beautiful fish, and you see these incredible brain corals that are huge. They're tiny colonies of animals. Uh, you see, and there's trees growing on the shore, and you see how the trees photosynthesize, and they're making food out of that. What do you learn about God? He's what do you learn about the Lego builders? He's talented. Yeah. So God is talented and intelligent beyond our wildest dreams. So he's talented and intelligent. Yes, extremely intelligent. Then at night, you're on your deserted island, and you've had a nice dinner of shrimp because they're all over there. <laughs> and then you look out at the stars, and, it, and there's no cities around, you know, and it's a clear night. There's no moisture in the air. And you look up, and you can see probably tens of thousands of stars. What does that teach you about God? He's he works in beautiful ways. Yeah, beauty, beauty and, and power. Because who, who can make a universe with, I mean, all you can see with the naked eye is probably, 20, let's, I'm just going to say 20,000 stars. But with our, our telescopes, we can see millions, even billions of stars. That tells you God is incredibly powerful. Big and powerful. Yeah. I don't have more light in my pencil. What's that? I don't have any more lead in my pencil. Do so you need to write any pencil? You can use some of mine. I have some. You got some? Okay. Yeah, can I get? That's the one thing I don't like about mechanical pencils. Mm -hmm. You have to have lead. Give it back. She will. Emma's trustworthy. Yes. Right, Mia? <laughs> <laughs> How do you she gave me the eyebrows. Uh-oh. How do you open this? The black part just pops off. Yeah, I have some of those in my office. Open it at the top. And then you got to get just one out. That's the tricky part. Hopefully they're the same width because they do make different widths. Well, they're the same pencil. Are they? Well, then it'll fit. Yeah. 
Okay, so the next question says, what might you know about God's will for your life? So you know that God is intelligent, he's powerful, he's creative, he's artistic. But what would that tell you about God's will for your life? Exactly. Can't really say anything. Yeah, you don't really know. I mean, you might think, well, he wants me to be creative and artistic and intelligent and powerful. I don't know. Yeah, so nature can tell you a lot about God, but it can't tell you God's will. What he what he wants you to do and what he's done for you in Jesus. You know, the mountain, you look at a beautiful mountain, it doesn't tell you that Jesus died for your sins or rose from the dead. Okay, let's look at questions 105 and 106 for the answers. So 105, we've read 106. That wants to read like five times. Okay, uh, question 105, who's our next reader? Who read last? I think I recited last. Well, we'll just start with Caroline then. Caroline, would you read question 105? And then we're going to keep reading the verses in the catechism. So, Emma, would you read Psalm 19.1, Tim, Acts 14.17, Mia's going to have Romans 1.20, and Witt's going to end up with Romans 2.15. Wait, what do I have? That was a lot. <laughs> You're, you have Psalm 19, verse 1, on page 129. Okay. It's under question 105. And Caroline's going to read the question. So I have... You have the last Bible verse there. It's paragraph number 314. Can we learn about God apart from the Bible? To some extent, we can learn about God as our creator. Creation witnesses to God, his goodness and his power. The human conscience. So the human conscience. Conscience tells you, oh, I did something wrong, or I did something right. Conscience also witnesses to God and his righteousness. Okay, so in Psalm 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Tim, uh, Acts 14, 17. Yet he did not leave himself without witness. For he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Okay, so God gives us food. We should be thankful for that. Romans 1, 20. Mia? Yeah. I think it's in the catechism. You can use your catechism. Either, either way is fine. But if you got in your Bible, that's fine. <laughs> She's doing it the hard way. Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal mm -hmm. eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what he what has been made, so that the people are without excuse. Good. So just like Witt said, you can look at the universe and go, Whoa, somebody's really powerful. And then Wit, Romans two fifteen. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their cons while conscience, cons conscience, conscience, <laughs> conscience, <laughs> yeah. They, they also bear witness, their, and their conflicting thoughts accuse, or even excuse, or even excuse. But so what he's talking about there is that even even in their own uh, own conscience. We know there's right and wrong. Even if you've never read a Bible in your life, people all around the world know there's right things to do and wrong things to do. Just common sense. Just common sense. And again, we already read 106, and that's about uh, the creation and, and how it teaches us about God. Okay? All right. So wh so where do we need to go to, uh, to know about God? So, Caroline, would you read that paragraph? It's kind of on that big Bible picture on page 75. The Bible tells us who God is and who we are in relation to Him. The Creed summarizes all of that so we can take it to heart and share it with others. God loves us so much, He wants us to know about Him and what He's done for us. So He made sure that we knew about Him and His Word. Right, so God knows that we need to know about Him and His plan of salvation, so He wrote it down for us. Isn't that nice? Is that clock over there accurate? Yes. So I was like, this lesson's gone really fast. No, yeah, that's because they're short lessons now. Yeah. All right, so let's turn the page in our workbooks to page 76. Connections. You've studied the Ten Commandments. We finished that. You know you failed to keep them. Now what? What will God do next? That's where the creed comes in. We learn about who God is, what he has done, and what he will do. Use the Apostles' Creed to summarize the following answers. What do we leave about God the Father? So just think of the Apostles' Creed. Like, I believe in God the Father, 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 Almighty, Maker of Heaven and Earth. Okay, there you go. Now the next one will be harder because it's 
a lot longer. And I don't want you to write the whole second article of the creed. So we'll try to summarize it. Okay. So maker of heaven and earth, that, that's the circle, in, <coughs> the top circle. And then the circle on the left says, what do we believe about God the Son? So you have to summarize the whole second article of the creed, which says, so can, we, can we say it from memory without looking at it, Caroline? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. That was pretty good. Okay, so now you got to summarize that. You, don't, you know, you don't want to just copy the whole thing in that little blue circle. So, so what do we believe about God the Son? How would you summarize that? That he, he was born. He was born. He was born human, but yeah. And died. And died. So he's born. And then, he died for our sins. And then he rose. He rose from the dead. That's a good way to do it. So he he was he was born. born he died for our sins. And he rose from the dead. Is there more? Of course there's more. But we're just trying to summarize here. And that's why you memorize the creed, so you know all the other stuff. Rose from, rose from the dead. <laughs> rose from the dead. Do you have a band-aid? Yes, I do. There is a... Yeah, I hate those. There is actually a first aid kit here. Handy, handy. That's a large mistake. Well, you know, we have a lot of meat here, so we want to make sure. There we are. Watch there be a first aid kit with that baby. Is that what I could do about the right size? Yeah. Okay, so the third question is what about the Holy Spirit? So can we say the third article? It's getting harder now. This is always the hardest one to remember. See, I got to figure out, remember how it starts again. I believe yeah. in the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Christian the Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, sins the, resurrection the resurrection of the body, the and life the everlasting. Amen. 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 Yes. So, how would you summarize that in that last blue circle? Maybe we should say it again. Okay, let's say it again. Uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, that's all of us, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is way harder, so you got to think harder. It sounds like basically every like couple words we pause and every couple words there's something we believe and it's really hard to put it's hard to summarize it yep so so here's how a lot of people summarize it. they they talk about how god is still at work in the church through the holy spirit because um jesus of course ascended into heaven right and, and so we we uh, don't need to we don't see him physically but god is still at work and so what do we believe about God, the Holy Spirit? That he works in and through the church. We copy that? Sure. God works in and through the church. And so that's where, you know, where do, where do we know that our sins are forgiven? Well, of course we know it from reading the Bible, but we hear that God works in, in and through the church. So I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. People interpret that differently. They might, they might think it actually means going to communion, or they might think it's all of us together. Um, None of my family members have this memorized except for me. <sighs> me you might have. You have guys got to get the whip crack in here. Get those guys yeah, memorized. I, I always like. I always stare at them, like just saying it, and they're like looking uh, down, uh, like a other kid and not this kid. I I get the other one wrong a lot. It's very frustrating because I keep saying stuff out of this one because I know this one a little better. I know, I know the other one better. So whenever my grandma's playing the piano, I just look at her and say it. That's cool. I so I try to make eye contact with everybody. So you'll mom, see me look at you. And that's just like, hey, we're saying the same thing. We believe the same thing. That's why we do that's that. That's why. That's why. My mom yeah. was like, Pastor never Could, stares at me. I think he's scared of me. Who says that? My mom. Your mom does? I'll stare at her next time. Caroline said I should stare. I believe in God the Father only. <laughs> now he's just plain weird. In Sunday school? Um, when we were like talking about how Jesus turned water into wine, he was like, Woman, 
This yeah, is my alley yet. Jesus told <laughs> his I, I know, I know that story, and, too. Um, when, hey, it's and not my I, time yet. And when, <laughs> Excuse me? When, when we went home, I'm like... <laughs> Woman, are we going home to my mom? And she's like, child, we are. <laughs> that's funny. I, I haven't asked my mom yet. She, yeah. she didn't get... Yeah, ask sleep. them. That's a hard one even for she, pastors to interpret. She didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so... Don't make her go. So yeah. like, if your mom does not get a lot of sleep... Be very nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, if your mom doesn't sleep, then... <laughs> All right, we got four minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up here. At the bottom of the page, it says, read questions 111 and 112. We're talking about the, the Holy Spirit. What distinguishes the Father, Son, and Spirit from one another? A, in their relationship to one another, they are distinguished in their interactions with one another. The Father begets the Son from eternity. So Jesus is not born like you or me. He's always existed. But but he, the Father... Uh, I don't even know how to describe that really. It's just that the the son. He, like, he's always. It's the relationship. He's always been the son. That's maybe one way to say it. The, um, the son is begotten of the father from eternity. The Holy Spirit from eternity proceeds from the father and the son. So they they make way for him and send him. Letter B, middle of the page. In their relationship to us, they are distinguished by their works for us. The scriptures ordinarily, it changes, but ordinarily speak of the Father as creating us. So when you read in the Bible about the, the one who creates everything, it's generally attributed to the Father, but also to the Son and the Spirit. So it's not that they don't do that work, but the main person is the Father. Uh, the Son redeeming us. Did the Father have anything to do with saving us? Of course he did. He sent his Son. But we recognize the Son's the one who died. I think and, the son was the one who actually did it. Yes, right. And then the spirit is the one who sanctifies us. And that means, it's a big fancy word, it means to set something apart. Like, this is my work computer. So, like in baptism? Yes, in your baptism you were set apart. Remember I, I shared with you before about the communion, like the big cup and stuff. Could I use that at home to have a glass of wine? No. Sure. But we'd never do something like that. Why not? Because it's set aside for special work in the church. And that word, if you want to say a fancy word, it means it's sanctified. It's set apart. And so in your baptism, you were set apart for God. And that's the, I mean, do the Father and the Son do that? Yes. But that's generally in the Bible, it, it describes the Holy Spirit is doing that. And then at the bottom of the page, what unites the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one God. In their relationship to one another, the three persons find their unity as one div divine being called dog, dog, called God. The Father, Son, and Spirit are alike <laughs> almighty, alike creator, alike redeemer. So, there, so turn the page in your Catechism 132. Okay. See here, I thought you guys were following along with me. <laughs> Oh, I At the top of the page, it says there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, the varieties of service in the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who powers them all and everyone. And you might think of the, of the benediction I used today, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's a, a Bible verse. That's right out of the Bible. So one God. But, but three persons. No, we can't possibly understand God. But we just say, okay, this this is who he is. You can just accept it. Yep, that's right. Okay, so it's time to close in prayer. I'm going to stop the recording.